Hi, my name is William Thayer, and I'm talking about the COVID crisis. In this particular video, I'm talking about how do we produce the test machines that are needed to do comprehensive testing. Now, the COVID problem, obviously, this very, very nasty virus, over 500,000 cases in the United States, over 20,000 people dead as a result of this. I've done a previous uh, video where I compared testing versus treatment. Treatment is not going to be the solution to stopping the problem, which I define as the spread of COVID. Okay, Only when we get a vaccine will we have a treatment. The therapeutics we have only help the ill people. It doesn't help, it help the spread. Okay, So comprehensive testing in finding which people are sick and weeding them out, that's the key. That was the subject of this a particular uh, video. I've got the title down there, COVID Testing versus Treatment Movie is the title, and there's the link if you would look at that. Now, outline for this particular talk, It again, I'm going to emphasize the solution is not medical treatment. Yeah, we want to give people medical treatment, but that is not going to stop the spread. The spread's a problem. We have 500,000 people infected. We'll probably have a million people infected. We need to stop the spread. The solution is comprehensive testing. Comprehensive testing, I'll define as testing every single American every single day. We have the test machines. We just don't have enough of them. We need to think in terms of producing millions of these test machines. And the subject of this video is, can we produce them? And the answer, of course, is yes. So here's one of the test machines that's a great test machine. This is by Abbott Labs. It's called ID Now. Gets results in 12 minutes. Here is another great machine. This is by Mesa Biotech. The size of the machine is the size of your hand. It gets results in one half hour. There's other machines, of course. But what I want to do is illustrate what we really want to be able to do with the Abbott machine. The Abbott machine can test in 12 minutes, or it can do five tests an hour, or 120 tests a day. So if we divide that into 330 million Americans, we find out that we could do all the testing with 2,750,000 Abbott test machines. Can we produce that many? Yeah, we can do it. It's America. My God. Uh, we produced 300,000 aircraft in World War II. Now, what does it cost to make millions of test machines? Well, in the Abbott test machine, we do have a number. The machine costs 4,500. So if we take 4,500 times 2,750,000, we get about $12, 12 billion. Well, how does, that's a lot of money, but it's peanuts compared to what Congress just did. They threw two trillion dollars at the problem, and probably more is coming after that. Okay, and when throwing two trillion at the problem, how much was thrown at the construction of making test machines? I bet you there wasn't ten million dollars in the budget for that, and that's why I'm making these videos. So. How do we produce test machines? And along with the test machines, you need test samples. So I'm going to break the production into two parts. This video is going to deal with just the test machine, which is totally mechanical, totally mechanical and electrical. We excel at making these types of machines. The other part is test samples. They're kind of a combination of chemical and genetic stuff. I'm going to save that for the next video. Okay, so here's a test machine. The Abbott test machine is about the size of a toaster. And on the right side, I got a toaster. So I got to guess at how many parts are in the Abbott test machine. I'm going to guess 100 parts. In this particular toaster, which is certainly a simpler machine, but it has a lot of the same things. You heat up uh, the sample in uh, the uh, Abbott test machine. It goes through test cycles. Or you heat up things in toast. It's a little simpler with the toaster, but it's, you know, it's got a lot of the same things. So you got 39 parts in the toaster, and yeah, you got to assemble them, okay? You got to have a plan. Okay, so my guess at the production of an Abbott uh, uh, test machine to, to, to do 2.7 million, I'm going to say it's got 100 parts. Let's, you know, you always break things when you're making something into subassemblies. Let's just say four subassemblies of 25 parts. I'm going to say that uh, 
a skilled person, say like an unemployed machinist for Southwest Airlines, could probably produce uh, these four sub-assemblies in four hours total, which would mean two machines in an eight-hour shift. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't have one person making the whole machine. You'd have each person doing a part. But equivalently, uh, uh, two machines per eight-hour shifts. So if we need 2,750,000 machines, divide that by two, we need 1,375,000 shifts, which would be an awful lot for one person, but we got more than one people around, person around. Let's assume that our person says that this is a natural, national emergency. I'm going to work 10 straight shifts just to see what that would take. So if we have 1,370,000 shifts, divide it by 10 shifts, we need 137,500 men or women to make this product. Okay, we got 17 million unemployed. We've got unemployed people at all the airlines that are totally qualified to do this. Unemployed people at Boeing, unemployed people at Ford, unemployed people at GM. We have plenty, plenty of people to come up with 137,000 workers, okay? So we could produce 2,750,000 test machines in 10 days. It takes 10 shifts by 137,000 people, okay? 10 days. That's what we kind of, that's what we need to do. That's not what we're doing, okay? That's the problem. That's the reason I'm making this video. What we're doing is stuff like this. Here's Mesa Biotech. It's got a good machine. Look at those. They've got hundreds of machines that they made over there on the left. Can they produce millions? No way. No way can they produce millions. Here's the problem. Look over on the right. That's the whole company. Okay. I don't know. What is that? 40 people? There's no way they can make millions. That's why what we need are hundreds of companies working with Mesa Biotech, working with Abbott to produce these machines. So during the ventilator shortage, Ford and GM were drafted to produce ventilators, not cars, okay? Without being drafted, on their own initiative, Tesla designed and built their own ventilator with Tesla parts, auto parts, 80% of it. I mean, it's kind of like Apollo 13. These guys are so great, really, really great. Here's their video link down there. I'm so impressed by these guys. And that's the kind of initiative we want. So we need Ford, we need GM, we need Tesla, we need Southwest Airlines, we need American Airlines, all these people that are unemployed to go out and produce test machines. We have given the airlines, for example, $50 billion to protect the employee paychecks of those airline people. They're sitting on their hands, not because they want to, they'd rather be flying airplanes, but the best way to protect their paycheck is to get the country over this COVID crisis and get back to flying aircraft. $50 billion to the airlines. They should show the initiative, get with other companies, and start producing these test machines. They're not going to do it all. They're not going to prepare the chemistry and stuff like that, but they sure got the people to assemble these machines. Tesla, I mean, if we left it up to Tesla, they'd probably come up with a robotic solution. But the bottom line is we can do this. Now, summary. Comprehensive testing is what we need, not treatment. We can produce 2.7 million test machines for probably $12 billion and do it we could do it in 10 days, depends how many people we put on it. Now, next YouTube video, I'll be talking about producing the test samples in a future YouTube video, why we need to keep testing. We need to keep testing all year or this thing is going to come back. Thank you very much for your attention and stay healthy.